Okay, so y'all want to move on to intrinsic X. Okay. Which ones? Because there was a set that y'all said there just hadn't been a 403 analysis on yet. And then there was, uh, I guess there were a few that at least somebody, Mr. Ryan was maintaining, um, were not really intrinsic. Yes, yes, okay. Your Honor. Um, that's accurate. Back in 2022, the state filed a general notice um, that they were going to introduce intrinsic evidence. Mm -hmm. um, we then got a witness list on July 31st, which I think was supposed to be one of the final, we can rely upon this witness list. And within that, there were four incidents which happened in 2023. So they, one, post-date that notice, two, they post-date the indictment. So mm -hmm. we've never received any sort of notice from the state saying we are seeking to admit this as intrinsic. However, that is what it is labeled as okay. on the witness list. So that those All are right. what we take issue with. Okay, got it. And these are the incidents that occurred in the jail generally? One in, one in the jail, three in the courtroom. Okay, thanks. Sure, if Ms. Abbasi realizes that we did notice two of the ones that occurred in the earlier part of 2023, um, the stabbing of the person in the jail by um, Mr. Ryan, Mr. Blaylock, um, and others, as well as the um, violation of the Georgia Controlled Substances Act by Mr. Williams and Mr. Adams. But, and those two occurred on January 31st, 2023, and January 18th, 2023, respectively, the um, filing that we noticed the defendants of those on was November 6th, 2023. There were two, I think, two additional uh, acts that occurred in 2023 during the time that this case has been ongoing. And one was um, the drugs that were found in Mr. Stillwell's cell. Um, and we've noticed them of the pictures of the drugs and the other contraband and the marijuana that was found in Mr. Ryan's um, pants um, when he was searched in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. uh, d okay. So, the stabbing that occurred in the jail, right? It did. Okay. And then the VGCSA violation was in court. It was. The obviously drugs in Mr. Stillwell's cell was in jail, jail. right? And then the marijuana in Ryan's pants was in court. Is there another incident that occurred in court? D not this on here. Okay. Um, Ms. Abbasi, you had said one in jail, three in court. I'm sorry, Judge. That... Two in jail, two in court. Correct. Okay. Okay. Um, and the argument as to each is that that's, this is not really intrinsic? Yes, Judge. Okay. It doesn't fall into any of the three categories which would classify it or qualify it as intrinsic. Okay. Here you go. Let me pull out my case law on that. Which let's see. All right. Um, what is what's the state's position on why and how that is intrinsic? The bussy stabbing, which is going I'll start with your honor involved um why i'm still... sorry what'd you say the what oh i'm so sorry I, I just didn't understand what you said understood the victim in the january 31st stabbing his name okay. was harold bussy right. and that's what Bussie, I okay. to it is. so that stabbing involved um several ysl gang members stabbing a in an inmate at the fulton county jail who was mm -hmm. alleged to have messed with rodelius ryan's commissary um, it involved, among others, Demise McMullen, 
Javon Fleetwood, Christian Eppinger, Damone Blaylock, and Rodelius Ryan. They all, in concert, held down this person and stabbed him repeatedly, um, all to protect and to um, vindicate something he had done to one of their other, one of their fellow YSL gang members. It's the way that I okay. see it. So that um, is, it seems just, it's what we've alleged in the indictment um, that YSL members uh, do. They work to um, maintain, they maintain um, individuals ready and willing to preserve and protect the reputation, power, um, and even the territory of the enterprise through the use of violence. Um, okay, I understand. With respect to the law, we would cite Johnson versus the state of Georgia Supreme Court case decided September 21st, 2021, cite 312 Georgia 481. And we cited this last week. The pen site is for the pen site is 491 to 492. in support of it, okay? With respect to the January 18th violation of the Georgia Controlled Substances Act, this is two YSL members on trial for racket conspiracy to violate the RICO Act through drug distributions, drug use, drug possessions. And while in court on trial, they are passing Percocets one to another. And we argue one to the alleged leader of YSL while in open court. One of the assertions that we make regarding the conspiracy we have um contraband in the jail um we have Conspi uh, stabbing in the jail of YFN Lucci. We have communications in the jail. These types of um, actions on the part of the defendants are the type of actions that we have alleged in the indictment and it shows that the enterprise flows from the streets to the jail to the courtroom and that the conspiracy is ongoing. And what exactly is the evidence you would be introducing on um, this VGCSA? The video of it. And what all does, I mean, maybe I need The to, video what does shows, it show? shows Mr. Adams um, going up to Mr. Williams while on a break, he's appearing to dap him up, if you will. Mr. Williams puts his hand up under the table um, one of our lieutenants goes over to Mr. Williams and sort of says, give it here. Mr. Williams brings his hand out from under the table, relinquishes the Percocet to him, uh, and later Mr. Adams is searched. And I think more Percocet pills, more drugs are found on Mr. Adams. And the um, drugs, the photos and okay. tests of those drugs. All right. And what's next? The marijuana was um, also, so Mr. in Mr. Stillwell's cell, there was, 
on March the 29th of 2023, there were drugs found in Mr. Stilwell's cell that consisted of ecstasy, ecstasy, pills, um, contraband, was it cell phone? A contraband cell phone um, for him to have gotten uh, those okay. drugs into the jail while he's on trial for Okay. Kind of actions involving um, narcotics and the enterprise and the sale and distribution of drugs through that enterprise, um, we would we believe is evidence of the ongoing conspiracy. Okay. Um, another. And then the last one, I guess, was the marijuana found on Mr. Ryan. Give me a little bit more background about what your evidence is going to show on that one. That Mr. Ryan, while sitting in court, I believe deputies may have smelled the marijuana okay. on Mr. Ryan. Um, and when they went back to try and search or to figure out where the smell was coming from, a, a, a large commotion was made. And the deputy... A large commotion by... Mr. Ryan. And the deputies found the um, marijuana attached to, I think, his inner, like, inner garments. Okay. We have the video. Okay. It, we don't know how it got there. <laughs> um. I mean, on the, on the, on the Percocet, you've got an alleged gang member providing it, right? Yes. So, how about, we don't have anything like that with regard to the marijuana we don't have we just, provided him with the marijuana, no. Okay. Right. Um, I don't know how pertinent it is that we have one that's not on here that is uh, also involving drugs that are brought into the courtroom and provided to another um, YSL member, but that particular one has been severed, so we don't have that right. one on here. Okay. Um, I think that the first three that we talked about are, um, I can see how those would be intrinsic to showing the allegations that, um, you know, this is a continuing ongoing RICO enterprise. Mr. Ryan being in possession of marijuana when we don't know where it came from, um, that one, I just don't see that falling within. I mean, it shows, you know, what it shows that he's in possession of an illegal substance, but it doesn't, I don't think it show. I don't think it's intrinsic. So I'm going to rule that one out. Yes, Your Honor. The other three. Your Honor. I'm, yes. Go ahead. I appreciate the directed verdict that you just gave for one of Mr. Ryan's Oh, intrinsics. is that one of his, that's not something. No, that, no, no, no. I'm saying, yeah. I'm saying you're that's keeping it out without thing. hearing, but from us, but um, regarding Mr. Stillwell's, mm -hmm. okay, we have an indictment with a hundred, I believe it's 191, could be off 191 over X. Yeah. Okay. We also now have a list. I, at first we thought maybe they had abandoned these 53 and they were narrowing it down to four, but no, it's 53 plus four, yeah. 57 plus 191. That's 248, I believe, 248 uncharged events uh, or not substantively charged right. events in, in, in that are coming into this trial. Regarding, you know, the state keeps saying, and this shows the enterprise. Okay, there were apparently, I've seen photos, I wasn't there. There were pills that were recovered from Mr. Stillwell's cell, where he has a cellmate. Okay. okay. Um, there is absolutely nothing about those pills that suggest they were provided by anyone associated with YSL. There's absolutely no nothing that suggests that those pills were going to anyone associated with YSL. There's absolutely nothing to suggest that any proceeds from that pill, those pills, were being provided to anyone in YSL. 
there was a phone. I have not received any information from that phone that suggests any link at all to YSL. Okay. I am not saying my client's a drug dealer, but what I am saying is people that are in possession of drugs, whether it be my client or his cellmate or someone else, are able to sell drugs without being part of a huge enterprise mm -hmm. and without any evidence that somehow this is linked to YSL, this isn't intrinsic. The, okay. the, the test for intrinsic is uh, it, an uncharged offense arising out of the same transaction as the charged offenses. I don't believe that's the case. Evidence necessary to complete a story of the crime. That is definitely not the case in this, in this scenario. And it's inextricably intertwined with the evidence for the charged offense. I don't believe that's right. the case either. So well, I yeah, don't know why this I is. I understand. Thank and you, sir. And just so you know, Your Honor, he is charged on a separate indictment. I believe it's indicted. If not, it's in a CP case still. But he is charged separately. Okay. And that case is pending in Fulton County Superior Court. Okay. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you for uh, bringing my attention to that. Um, Your Honor? Yeah. If I may a bit further. Um, the, the one on, case, on which? Um, really regarding all three of them. Okay. I'll start specifically with the stabbing as the state did. Can, can I rule on this other one first? Wait, Give me just a second. Which other one? The one that Mr. Sharp oh, was yes, just yes, talking Your about. Honor. Okay. So the um, Stillwell had a cellmate. Is there any evidence as to where the drugs came from or that it was his or that the cell phone was his or connected in any way to YSL. Well, two things. So, yes, we, yes, um, we believe that. I think we have, do we have body cam? Let me just search this way. We believe that the testimony from the um, deputies within the jail would establish um, his ownership of it, but more importantly, what we have, I briefly touched on it, was the other. YSL member whose intrinsic act that we've not um, put in here, the pills, mm -hmm. if we call them purple hearts, blue stars, and yellow diamonds, they were trafficking amounts in Mr. Stilwell's possession, and they were trafficking amounts in the other YSL um, member's possession that is not on here and that has been severed. They are the same type of pills and they are a large trafficking amount. Okay, but um, and we know that at least that other one, that um, other YSL member smuggled the drugs into the jail or at least into that area through the courtroom. As it was described, it was enough um, in one, it was a pharmaceutical. Amount. Okay, so any evidence that what was in Mr. Stilwell's cell came from that? Other than it was that they were just alike. If you looked at photographs of the, it, it's not like you had all white pills. Like you had the same array, um, Blue, variety, purple, yeah, and to use just some colors. Like there were literally three, at least three different colors and three different shapes of peels, and they were the same three different colors and three different shapes. And you can establish that those were YSL related. Yes, because yes, the How? the. When you say those, are you you're talking about the ones? So that if I'm came I'm in? to accept that y'all have enough that you can make the assertion that the pills that came through some court proceeding to this other person who's not a part of this trial, right, um, are the same that are in Mr. Stillwell's cell, then what's the YSL connection? Not there? the same pills, the same type. The yes. same, you know, shipment or whatever. The same. That person, loot. that person was in this trial. That person was in this trial during that time. Okay, but them being in the trial and co-defendants doesn't establish what the assertions are. No, it's the, it's the, 
not similarities, the exactness of the, like. No, I'm not, I'm not asking at this point, like assuming for the sake of argument that, yeah, these pills all came from the same place. And he, in fact, then, then what, what's the YSL tie-in? Sure. So we can hear what's going on. I didn't know y'all didn't have them. They're not upstairs. Uh, yes, you may. Thank you. So are y'all satisfied about, you know, our other bench conference was about the location? other person everybody I just assumed that y'all All right, I am, with regard to the contraband in Mr. Stillwell's cell, I'm going to rule that out as well. Um, and, I mean, you may have another indictment against him at some point in time, and it would all be appropriate to come in there, but not for this case. So that, now, Ms. Abbasi, what do you want to say with regard to the other two? Yes, Your Honor. Um, Your Honor, actually, the state cited when they discussed the stabbing, the same case I cited, um, Brown, which had, as Mr. Shard said, those three circumstances, uh -huh. uncharged offense, which arose from the same transaction or series of transactions as the charged offense. Um, that's actually the um, topic of discussion in Brown. And in Brown, it was a robbery which happened one hour before the charged mm -hmm. crime. Um, if the state is going with it's part of the same transaction or series of transactions, then we have a very serious problem with proximity um, because the case law is not anything a conspiracy does that happens over the lifetime of the conspiracy 
qualifies as intrinsic, um, it has to be closely linked with the others, excuse me, closely linked with the other charged offenses within the indictment. Your Honor can look at Sanchez Villa versus State, which is 341 Georgia App 264 from 2017. Um, within that case, the evidence the state was trying to present, the court found all of the cases the state submitted distinguishable. Um, and the same is true here when Your Honor goes through the cases okay. as far as being um, part of the same transaction or series of transaction as the charged offenses. This, like those cases, is attenuated in time. For ones which do have more time in between, mm -hmm. they discuss how in those cases the defendants in their other uncharged acts were in the exact same role. So in one, it was trafficking cocaine as the lookout. In the uncharged, trafficking cocaine as the lookout. There were very specifics linking them. Uh -huh. was, was, were any of these in the Sanchez via either those facts or the cases that are distinguished, uh, either a RICO charge that was involved or I will, a gang enterprise? I will double check because they go through quite a few cases. Um, I'm going to have to look back through okay. all of them. I think the hallmark of it um, that we get within Sanchez after they discuss all these cases, um, the evidence in this case, the Sanchez case, is considerably more attenuated in time and space from the events leading up to the charge offense. Mm -hmm. So it offers little to help the state. They continue on and say that, well, as far as this goes, you know, we're not in a circumstance of completing the story of the crime. This is just expanding it. Yeah, completely. I mean, <laughs> right. It's a different crime, but it, it's it might have been a different thing if they were charged with a RICO count in Sanchez. So I, I'm, that's that to me is what if these were just whatever the other charges in the indictment are, then I would say, you know, no, but it's the kind of enterprise nature and the ongoing nature that. And I, I certainly understand that, Your Honor. I think, yeah. however, to say, well, it's part of the conspiracy basically opens the door to anything, any defendant allegedly who is a member of YSL does then automatically becomes part of the conspiracy and automatically comes in simply because it is intrinsic. Okay. Uh, I think with a lot of this, Your Honor, we're, we're getting close to some due process concerns here. Um, the, the defendants are on trial for the offenses they were indicted mm -hmm. on. That's what they're on trial for. They're not in trial for the enterprise continuing in 2023 that it was still ongoing. That's just not relevant. If the day after indictment, every one of the defendants got together and said, whatever our group is, is over, and it was completely disbanded and no longer continued to exist. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't be relevant either. Um, what they're indicted for is what they're on trial for. So here, we're expanding, we're expanding. That's, I think, a lot of what's happening with our social media and other things that I guess the state has found afterwards. They're now being tried for things the grand jury never heard about. Um, and that specifically is a violation of due process. I can supply to your honor um, the U.S. Supreme Court case law. Um, no, I, I'm with you on that one. And I am uh, very skeptical of the state's argument that any uncharged not showing up in the indictment overt act that they offer could in any way support if found a RICO count being established. So I... Unless I hear otherwise, which I don't want to hear otherwise right now. We'll take that up another day, but that's that's not our issue right now. But yeah, I think the state's got some convincing on, on that count. But with regard to whether, you know, it's intrinsic, I, I would, I mean, I want to get it right. I want to follow what the law says about it. So I think that the the key issue here is if we're talking about, Rico, or we're talking about, you know, a, a gang enterprise kind of thing. So maybe we could all do a little bit more research on that. I did look at in the state's original okay. notice, they cited um, a proposition, I believe that was cases. 
have been in gang and conspiracy prosecutions. Gang and conspiratorial activities have been classified as intrinsic evidence. They then cited um, a number of other cases. Mm -hmm. There is not one single case I can find in any case at all where the intrinsic actions come after the indictment, because that's the touchstone of it being intrinsic, that it really is all one thing, that the story doesn't make sense without all of these pieces. And these things hadn't even happened yet. Yeah. So it's not possible but that they could be essential. Let me ask you this. If, for instance, and this is entirely a hypothetical, yes. but if this group got together and stabbed this, whatever his name is, Bussy, not because he messed with Mr. Ryan's commissary account, but because he was going to be a key witness in this case. And they, I'm sure the state, if in this hypothetical, would argue we're trying to send a message that he better not be a key witness in this case. Would the argument be different then? Well, yes, it wouldn't be. They wouldn't be trying to admit it as an intrinsic act. It can no. be a crime in and of itself no, separately. No, we're talking about, no, we're not talking about, then they get separately indicted. We're right. talking about they're in the middle of this trial. This happens. It's not obviously set forth in the indictment because right. it just happened. It would, it, it would be 404B and probably fall into a category there, which would make it admissible for a basis, which was not character. It just wouldn't come in as under intrinsic. Okay, so you would still make the same argument that it was not, that it couldn't be intrinsic evidence, even for that, because it occurred afterwards. Based on the definition I've seen of intrinsic, I, just, I, don't, I don't think it's possible for something which comes after to be okay. necessary to complete the story, unless the story wasn't complete at the time of indictment, but that's fundamentally unfair to try them for something which hasn't happened Yet. Okay, they're, they're not being tried for it. It's, Correct. But okay. Based on your All right. Well, I mean, y'all try to find me some more on point law on both sides, please, if you could. So yes, maybe sir. I'll, that'll be my preliminary ruling subject to revisiting. Okay. And Judge, there was one other thing. I don't know that it'll have any bearing on the court's um, ruling, but in that instance where Mr. Stilwell, where the drugs were found in Mr. Stilwell's cell, mm -hmm. there were, Miss um, Hilton pulled up the photograph that I asked her to, and it was, there was a shank. Is the, is the shank inscribed YSL? Then it no. Doesn't, it doesn't, no. I mean, it makes Mr. Stilwell look bad, but it it's not intrinsic. Yes. Okay. Your Honor. Uh, yes. If I may, uh, yes. before you make a decision on the uh, the one intrinsic, alleged intrinsic act that was referenced by the state involving the uh, supposed passing of a Percocet pill from Mr. Khalif Adams to Mr. Williams, um, I would ask that the court at, at least go and take a look at the, the video uh, that was referenced by the state. I think it's instructive. I also think that it, um, it, it un well, fortunately for us, um, paints a different picture than was recited by uh, Madam Prosecutor. I think the events did not occur in the manner that she referenced. Um, I was present. I was sitting right next to Mr. Williams. I think the video will show um, uh, something being passed to Mr. Williams, not him ha hiding his hand underneath the table or bringing it out and then giving it to the deputy or the deputy saying, give it here. It didn't happen that way. And I think that goes into the analysis of, of exactly what happened. All right, why don't you just tell me what you recall or what you think the video shows? Sure. What, what I recall um, and what I, what I know happened because I was okay. sitting right next to Mr. Williams in the front of the courtroom is that there was a break. Uh, Mr. Uh, Adams, who was sitting in the rear part of the courtroom, uh, came up and as he was going towards that door, uh, goes as though he's going to give Mr. Williams a high five or a dap or something right. like that and put something in his hand. There's a deputy who's standing about two feet in front of Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams looks surprised. Mr. Williams put, has it in his hand and gives it, puts it down on, on the table immediately. There is no putting hand under the, under the table to try and conceal it. Uh, there's no, the deputy who I was within earshot of did not say give it here. Mr. Williams looks at it and puts it down on the table and that's it. Okay. At, at, at which at which point uh, another deputy sees Mr. Adams and either takes him. I don't remember if they took him in the back or brought him back here. Okay. Uh, he was searched in the back, as I understand it. I think court recessed after that because of those occurrences. But that's how the, the incident actually occurred. Okay. Can y'all send me that video? We Yes. And, okay. we, and the, the deputy, the lieutenant, would also be a witness. Okay. 
to what I'm saying. All right. Well, I mean, the version I would I'm imagine reading. the video shows what happened. So. It does. It, it does indeed. Speak for right. so. Well, we'll come back to those two. All right, so that takes care of the allegedly intrinsic, but according to the defense, can't be intrinsic because they happen later in time than the indictment acts. What about the other intrinsic or allegedly intrinsic acts that there has not been a 403 analysis on yet? Can I just add something to the last? Yeah. Your Honor, can you ask what the prosecutorial need for this is? I can, but with intrinsic acts, that's not part of the analysis. Yes, 403 is the analysis. Well, 403. Which, which includes so, the prosecutorial need, waste of time, um, uh, prejudice, substantial prejudice outweighs any appropriate value. But to me, this is a big case. It's it been is. going on a long time. And now intrinsic acts. So... Yes, I, okay. I don't know how much the state needs to prove that Mr. Williams was knowingly or unknowingly given a um, an alleged item. I'm not so sure the crime lab came back, but I can't answer for that. Has the crime lab come yeah. back? That may be true. I don't know. I don't remember. Okay. All right. So we now have a 403 argument or uh, objection. So, you know, I think that the court had it. Right, regarding the need to analyze looking at the prosecutorial need. If it's a 404B um, act, then that would be a situation where we would be looking at the prosecutorial need, but it's not. We're alleging that it's an intrinsic act. And looking at 403, Your Honor, the analysis is, is it substantially more prejudicial mm -hmm. than probative? And it's simply not is our position. He's alleged to have Mr. Williams and the other indictees here are alleged to have conducted drug transactions. Um, one of the acts on the indictment involves um, them having a trafficking amount of drugs, right? Yeah, at, at least one. So we would argue that it in no way can be viewed as substantially more prejudicial than probative and it's intrinsic but we're pulling up the video too well i mean we'll i guess though is that intrinsic is yet to be determined based on the time period but your honor this yes. is not really my argument but i have got to weigh in here oh, on, the, on this do. yeah thank you um i'll get my five minutes in the, the, the 403 analysis is not limited, as you know, to is it more prejudicial than probative. Mm -hmm. As Mr. Steele said, you also have undue delay and waste of time. Mm -hmm. And that's those are factors as well that I'm not surprised that the state ignores because they seem to have no concern for delay or waste of time. So those are factors that the court should consider as well, Your okay. Honor. All right. Thank you. Okay. Well, I will give y'all a couple of days to, if, if you, if you can find more on point law, provide that. And if not, I'll just have to go on what we've got and make a decision. I'll take a look at the case that uh, got cited and the cases within that. And then if need be, do the 403 analysis.